Hello, thanks for listening to the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, where we share insights from inside the accounting and finance profession that help you stay ahead of the curve. And that's whatever sector you work in. From the heart of London's financial district, from the AICPA and SEMA, I'm Kyle Hannan. This week's episode is the security value of human authenticity. And we'll be hearing about that from expert guest Kevin Yiannopoulos. He's a CPA, an ABV, a CFF and an ASA. He's a director of valuation services for a company based in Arizona. The company is called Brueggemann and Johnson Yiannopoulos. And Kevin will be giving us some new understandings of how good security today can drive better outcomes for your business tomorrow, especially in terms of what its value is. Kevin will talk us through the practical value of making the right changes personally and professionally at our company and beyond. And we'll also have a bit of a a deep dive into how being authentic and how being real can really help when it comes to reducing cyber threats and combating security risks. That's especially internal ones. So there's plenty of valuable insights on the way. So once you've listened, you can explore the links and other information in our show notes for this episode. You'll be able to tap into those from the podcast app you're using right now. Talking of tapping into things, let's get started with this week's conversation. Hello, Kevin. Where are you joining us from today? Well, I'm in the uh, old Pueblo. I'm in Tucson. I'm home, uh, which is wonderful. I have been on the road a little bit, uh, stops in Louisville and Nashville, so it's good to be back home. I'm sure it is. Is it one of those places that when you look out, you see lots of scrub and cacti and, and desert, or is that no longer the way things are outside your window right now? The thing about Tucson is, well, it's like any place else. Wherever you live, you're going to be inside three months of the year. It's just that in Tucson, it's a different three months. We stay inside in the summer. Uh, You have to make sure you wear some kind of uh, fireproof gloves. So when you touch the steering wheel in the summer, you don't get third degree burns. So uh, uh, a few minor adjustments and it's all good. Let's talk about how you got to where you are today. You're a shareholder and director of valuation services for Brueggemann and Johnson Yiannopoulos PC. You've worked alongside the AICPA in the past. In fact, um, the association honoured your contributions by naming you as the association's uh, 2006 Business Valuation Volunteer of the Year. Now, that's when the association was still the American Institute of CPAs. You were inducted into the AICPA Business Valuation Hall of Fame about nine years ago in 2010. So you were recognized uh, along with fewer than 30 people whose lifetime achievements and contributions have significantly advanced the valuation discipline. And you've really been seen as someone who's enhanced the valuation profession for CPAs. Now, you did mention you've been traveling. Um, That's not only been recently. You frequently lecture throughout the U.S. on the topics of valuation, applied finance, financial analysis. You've presented to the FBI, as well as the American Institute of CPAs, the American Society of Appraisers, the State Bars of Arizona and Utah, and many other organizations. And you've been a faculty member of the AICPA's National Business Valuation School for a quarter century. As if that wasn't enough, you're also an accomplished author. So I think you're the perfect person to give us the inside track on how better security will mean better prospects for valuing a business, building better person-to-person connections and focusing on authenticity and client relations can make your company worth more. We'll also be talking about how getting comfortable with discomfort might be a good thing because like ripples in a pond, you do need to throw in a pebble or two before you start making those little waves that make the right ripples happen, that drive the right impact for staff, for clients and potential investors or even for future buyers of your business. Kevin, I've said quite a bit about you and your work already. So what have I left out? There must have been something else that you're working on. Yes. Right now, actually, uh, I'm trying to change the world in a nutshell. No pressure then. We don't give ourselves enough credit. Uh, All of us can change the world. And and the main reason that we need to do that is is just what you said, the ripples. Uh, And I'd like to just change that a little bit, we can be the pebble. We can be the ones sending out the ripples. 
And all it takes really to begin with is to change yourselves. Um, I'm actually working on a, a book right now, believe it or not, for uh, couples that are getting divorced. And I kind of uh, have a working title along the lines of the the Zen of spousal maintenance, uh, trying to get through the divorce process in a way that is constructive rather than destructive. And that may be a tall order, but uh, I, that's that's kind of what I'm working on right now, among other things, of course. Give me an idea of how what you're doing connects with our topic today, because your core expertise is business valuation. So why did you develop your skills in that direction? Then how do you use them in what you're doing today? I think it's very relevant to our discussion today. Uh, when I originally got into public accounting, I was doing traditional accounting, uh, tax work, bookkeeping, audits, reviews, things along those lines. And for me, I found it just wasn't satisfying a creative need that I have. Um, and so the main reason I got into business valuation is because it, it allowed me to take that creativity. Now, business valuation isn't solely about creativity, obviously, because you're, you're doing it based on sound accounting principles, um, reasonable judgment, similar things. But the creativity aspect allowed me to, to really use the right side of my brain a little bit more. I, uh, I tend to be more musically inclined. That's, in fact, when I was in Nashville, I'd always wanted to go and busk on Broadway. So I took a guitar down there and made three bucks. So I, I really think uh, holistic right side of the brain awareness is really very relevant to the discussion we're going to have today. We've called this episode the security value of human authenticity. Why do you think authenticity is so important right now? I think one of the biggest reasons really gets back to uh, motivations of people that are creating cybersecurity issues. For instance, uh, we know that one of the, the main pieces of threat modeling is to understand the motivation of those that are actually hacking or uh, getting into computers when they shouldn't be. You generally have three types of people that are, are doing this. It's thrill seekers, activists, and criminals. Um, but of course, there are others that aren't included in there, and, and that may be the biggest piece. It may be just disgruntled employees, for instance. And so understanding the motivation of, of people both within the company and outside of the company is very important. Human authenticity really allows us all to understand those motivations. We can get in the shoes of the under person. And the reality is that we've got to understand that. We've got to almost think like the disruptors to be able to know how to combat it. And this discussion about motivations, about the thrill seekers, the criminals, the activists, the dis gruntled employees. I mean, all of those conversations are coming to a head this month uh, with all the talk that is orbiting around uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month in the USA, as well as CyberSec Month in the EU. That's an annual thing. It happens every October. That's when we uh, are recording this uh, episode right now. Give us an idea of how the work that you do fits into these kinds of conversations. I don't know that we as a firm are doing anything necessarily revolutionary. The things that we utilize in our firm have been talked about in management courses and other for years, but they really stress the importance of relationships uh, both within and outside of the firm to obtain the greatest level of success. And those relationships, for instance, we, we generally think of a, 
A level two relationship is somebody that uh, we treat like family. Level three relationship might be uh, very personal, and, and in some cases, it may not be appropriate in the workplace. But nonetheless, if, if we establish those relationships with others, they tend to think of us as family. And the reality is you are less inclined to take advantage in a bad way of your family members. And so those, those relationships uh, have all kinds of uh, economic benefits. And I think we'll be talking a little bit more about that later. But um, certainly those relationships have tremendous benefits, both personally and professionally. I absolutely agree. And one of the things no one can disagree with is the fact that change is also a constant disruption, never stops. Now, even though you've been working in the industry for more than a quarter century, I'm going to ask you to take us back perhaps 10 years. Uh, when it comes to business valuation, what was the last big disruption you saw in that space, in that context? And what did it mean for the organization that you were working with back then? I actually don't have to go back even 10 years. Uh, the recent tax legislation that was passed, the TCJA, at the end of uh, 2017 was a really, I, I, I don't know that I'd necessarily call it a disruption, but it certainly was uh, earth changing, revolutionary, because it really got us to rethink everything we were doing, the methodology, uh, the impact of the tax changes on the value of businesses. And the interesting thing is, I, I will just say this as an aside, as an industry, we have a way of disrupting ourselves. Uh, so we don't necessarily need any help from anybody else, uh, a la a uh, tax change. But um, it, it you wouldn't think of evolutionary changes occurring in accounting or in valuation, but they're happening all the time. They may just be technological changes. And frankly, that is creating the huge issue for us from a cybersecurity standpoint because of those technological changes. We do so much uh, via email, uh, drop boxes, share, share files. It's wonderful and uh, scary at the same time. Before we talk about the impact of cybersecurity on a company's market value, take a minute to explain what a business valuation expert actually does, because then your answer to my next question will make perfect sense. Ultimately, a company's value, well, it, I suppose you could say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Value is in the eye of the beholder. And so ultimately, a company's value is heavily dependent on the risks that the investor believes the company presents in terms of their investment. Very succinctly, uh, a company, all things being equal, that is riskier has less value than a company that is seen as less risky. And so if you think of it in terms of cybersecurity, uh, recently, the, the last few years, there were some big retailers that had security breaches and some credit card information wound up in the hands of uh, the wrong people. Now, as an investor, if you believe that those are going to continue to happen with the company you're investing in, what happens to your perception of risk? Well, it, it increases exponentially. That means uh, the value of the company has to take a hit because the investor just sees a greater – they expect a higher return because there's more risk of investment with that particular company. So cybersecurity and, and problems that they create has a big impact on the value of companies. Which means that, as you say, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What we necessarily – think we know about a particular company or particular brand uh, may not be entirely accurate. You would be called in to go and get forensic and determine whether certain assumptions are true and then to, to put a price tag on it for potential investors. But what you've said is quite interesting because the value of a company may be seen in its ultimate selling price, but it also 
may have to take a hit when it comes to the amount it has to pay out to investors, the the return on their investment they see. Because if they perceive you as having a good but slightly insecure brand, they might still want to invest, but the terms will be considerably less friendly than if your security and your cyber threat situation was more stable. So what is the current state of play at the moment when it comes to the impact of cybersecurity on a company's value right now toward the end of 2019? How are we seeing those companies affected? Have there been any examples of how a security threat or something that did make headlines has actually affected the bottom line? Sure. I I was didn't know if I could uh, actually say this, but but I guess it was in the news. Target was one of those companies that had a, a security breach. And so uh, the value of the company takes a hit. You, you, you see this all the time. And you said something, I, I agree with everything you said, but you said something about being in the headlines. And I'd just like to mention that in in general, you don't find companies that are in the headlines for good things. But being in the headlines for something bad can be a good thing, too. I mean, look, if you look at uh, Nike, for instance, uh, they are in the headlines a lot because of controversy. That seems to help Nike's stock. So it, it really depends what the nature of the headline is. Certainly, uh, I'm very comfortable telling you that if the, if a company is in the news for security breaches, that's not a good thing. The value of the company is going to take a hit. And we'll be finding out a little bit more about those hits and what one can do about it as we continue our conversation shortly. Kevin will be telling us about how building better person-to-person connections and using authenticity in client relations can make your company worth more. He'll be talking to us about how getting comfortable with discomfort might actually be a good thing. And we'll also dig into the security value of human authenticity, plus squeeze in a bit of kumbaya. All of that is coming up in this episode of the Go Beyond Disruption podcast. It's brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. You can find out more about this podcast at gobeyonddisruption.com. If you've just discovered the podcast, remember to subscribe absolutely free. Get the episodes as they come out straight to your podcast app or your tablet, your computer. You can also browse through all of our older episodes. Uh, We're moving close to a 100 conversations focusing on how technology is changing the accounting and finance profession, as well as how we as professionals in all spheres are rising to the challenges, identifying opportunities and using our human intelligence to stay ahead of the curve. We are talking to Kevin Yiannopoulos about the security value of human authenticity. But before we get to that, let's jump into this. Kevin, you told me you have an anthem. (laughs) What is it? Uh, It's Kumbaya. And I think that I probably uh, drive people nuts uh, preaching love and forgiveness and reconciliation but the reality is, and, and frankly, this does have a lot of practical application when it comes to business and our professional lives, that we're just going to be better off if we all just remember that we are each other's brothers and sisters. That's just all there is to it. And uh, and so I, I try to live my life every day. Um I am a very flawed individual, but uh, I'm working on it. That's all we can do. So authenticity as, as a word, as a, a way of, of living, as a, as a principle of business, it seems to make sense. It sounds good. I mean, it has pride of place because it sits right at the beginning of the alphabet. So take us there. Take us back to the very start, to the beginning. In a practical sense – what is authenticity, really? I'm going to use another A word, awareness. And I really think that authenticity um, in, in some ways is, is a lot about awareness. And frankly, that has much practical application when it comes to the professional world as well. Um, I think 
it doesn't take much on a daily basis. It's just being aware of where we're at, what we're doing on my steering wheel and my truck. I have a couple of post-its that are there that I look at every morning and they remind me, they center me, they make me more aware of who I am and my respective place in the world. And uh, one of them, I alluded to this in the last question, says brother. And that is there to remind me that before I notice what anybody looks like, the color of their hair, whether they have hair or not, that they are my brother. And, and it's amazing what that simple thought has in terms of meaning, because if we remember that we're all connected, we are all brothers and sisters, um, it, it's just amazing the things that you will do and the things that you won't do because you recognize that we're all brothers and sisters. This kind of conversation, far from sounding too kumbaya or too kind of out there, I think this makes very good practical sense because you've already said that building better connections with other people, developing authenticity in relationships with clients, with business partners, sounds good, but it can actually make a company worth more. How can that be? There's no question. Part of it is basically doing something other than making that the primary focus. I, I've long felt that, for instance, if you did something that you really liked doing, the financial end would take care of itself. I think that's just as true with your business. If you're, if you're doing something and you're building those relationships, the economic end takes care of itself. Now, maybe you could get more. Uh, out of it. But but today we know that corporate social responsibility is very important. It's becoming more and more important. And so maybe part of that is the willingness to accept profits that are something lower than they might be just to establish the good social responsibility. So let me uh, say very quickly there are so many economic benefits to establishing those relationships and being authentic. If you are authentic with your customers, with your clients, they're loyal to you. And they don't come to you because you are the cheapest or uh, uh, you're lowballing. They stay with you because they feel that loyalty. Your family. So that has an economic benefit. The same thing is true of your employees. Your, your turnover is lower because you're family. You all feel connected. Uh, that has an economic benefit. And, and the reality is, I will tell you right now, energy draws energy. And so if you establish this positive energy within your company, it's, it's going to ripple. We talked about ripples earlier. That's going to ripple out. You're going to get clients because you are positive. Your firm is positive. You uplift people. I believe it. I've seen it. And um, it has so many economic benefits by establishing those relationships and being authentic. And there are security benefits to this too, aren't there? Because we were talking about the balance of comforts and discomforts. And we know you've just said, if we can connect with people better, we can put ourselves in the other person's shoes and seeing things from their perspective will help us work better together, which is obviously excellent, though it also helps us see ourselves from others' perspectives. And that has obvious benefits for predicting the security risks. If we can see ourselves as we've seen by other people who may not always be that well-intentioned toward us, that would certainly be very much a discomfort. But seeing ourselves from others' perspective also deepens connections with colleagues and clients, which is quite comfortable. So as someone who understands the value of security to a business's ultimate valuation and how it's perceived by prospective investors, how does the security risk of a company change by that company's ability to predict and defend itself against cyber threats? That is 
has to be the most important thing. We talked earlier about threat modeling and the ability to understand. Uh, it, you talked about the discomfort. Certainly, uh, it is it is discomforting to think that somebody would want to do that for really no other reason other than they are angry at the world, uh, whatever it happens to be. I mean, we can't be naive. We, we certainly, I, I'm a firm believer in the power of, uh, of love and, and connection, but we can't be naive to where we think that that's going to touch everybody. And so understanding what those motivations are uh, very definitely helps us to design. And, and in some respects, if we design our security system to take advantage of their uh, biases, so to speak, if, if they hate so much because of a particular thing, we can design our, our security system to address that. So understanding the motivations is very important in developing that security system to protect against it. Tech is everywhere. And obviously, you've said it makes sense to redirect ourselves back into these authentic, closer, deeper connections with with our world, with our colleagues. But how do we push past the tech, the distractions of computers and smartphones and technology to do this reconnection? I'll tell you that the most important thing is really to want to do it. It's to have the desire to, to change, to, to change the world. It's small things. It's, it's very seemingly innocuous things. Whenever I go to lunch, invariably I'm using a credit card, and on the receipt I write, be the pebble, shed a little light, uh, just give the world love, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and I ask, I always ask the server what their story is. And it sounds uh, funny, perhaps, but I like to go to restaurants like Hooters, not for the reason that people are thinking, but I, I always find some amazing people there. The other day I went and I asked the server about her background and she told me she was in her second year of nursing school and she told me about her son that she loves. What's the takeaway there? It goes back to what I said earlier about brothers and sisters. When we look at people, there are so many things there that we don't see that are wonderful. And we, we just have to assume that those things are there. Everybody has a story. So it's just little things. We don't have to do anything magnificent. All we have to do is to be aware and to remember there are brothers and sisters. Sometimes you just have to put your phone down. When I drive, for instance, I don't. I, I disconnect my phone. I want to listen to music. I want to think and ponder. That's all it takes. So how do we do that? Because with the right authentic connections comes that ability to create the right kind of impact, just like the ripple effect you were talking about when you toss a stone into the pond. You've got to want to do it. That's the important thing. And we might now say, right, we, we want to start the right kind of changes that would benefit our teams and our companies in the long run. I mean, why wouldn't we? But the question is then, how do we become that right kind of pebble? I've stood next to ponds and they're pebbles of all sizes. And sometimes you throw the wrong size in and you're left with no water in the pond. That's not the right kind of impact, is it? So how do we become the right kind of pebble? You talked earlier about discomfort, and I think, unfortunately, what it takes for some of us to have that desire is to be uncomfortable. It's to um, have some emotional trauma or some business trauma or whatever it takes uh, to get us to move. And unfortunately, uh, that's, that's all too often. And I, I think what we need to do is hopefully uh, develop the ability to want to make that change without having that trauma. I will tell you uh, personally, I know that there is, I'm going to use the term awakening. There is an awakening occurring right now. And the reason is there's been so much hate 
and anger and dissatisfaction that many people are tired of it. You know, if you, if you're carrying that hate and anger around, at some point you realize the only person that you're hurting is yourself. And, you know, once you realize that, you can begin to heal and, and change and help others. So, gosh, I, I wish I had the, the magic answer, but I, I just believe it's my responsibility and your responsibility to spread the word. It's just letting people know that, you know, we can do this differently. So that's what it takes. I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, the trauma. It's the uh, ability to recognize that I don't need the trauma and I can change and we can have a better world. Kumbaya. That reminds me that there are all kinds of things that we respond to. We leap up from our chair if someone had put uh, what you call a thumbtack or a drawing pin on the seat, of course. But we need to be able to move quickly because we want to. It doesn't always have to be because there's, as you say, the, the trauma. It doesn't have to be something sharp and nasty that causes movement. Sometimes you've just got to want to do that yourself. And that perhaps is the right kind of pebble. You've got to want to start a ripple. And of course, like most people, I suppose our, our typical listeners are aware that there are ripples going through business, through the profession, and they would like to keep ahead of, of those ripples or of those, those curves of changes. So help us out here from your perspective and your experience. We're talking about authenticity. We're talking about uh, predicting risk. We're talking about impact on business valuation. In that context, what's the next disruption that you see coming? Well, the very first thing that came to mind is the 2020 election. If nothing happens before then, I just have a feeling that one way or another, that's going to be a disruption, uh, regardless of who is elected, because the country is unfortunately so polarized now that there are going to be a lot of unhappy people. And that's, that's the next disruption. I really think that hopefully between now and then, <laughs> we can remember we're all brothers and sisters and we have uh, different views on, on politics. And uh, the, the funny thing is, if you really get right down to it and you look at everybody's respective positions, there really isn't that much difference in how people view things for 80 to 85 percent of the people in this country. There, are a, there is a very visible group on both sides but for the most part, I think people do want peace. They, they are reasonable. They do believe in positivity. I just think that rather than having those people at the ends on both sides be the most visible and vocal, those of us that believe in the power of love and connection and the universe need to be more vocal. That's one of the answers. That's why I think when it comes to the security, not simply of a company, but of a of an entire system, perhaps of an organization that might be trying to do its best in tough times, we all have a certain stake in making sure that things remain fairly predictable. And I think that is something I would hope that you can help us with now, because we'd like you to predict a good place to go online. If anyone would like to find out about this topic in general, or about your work in particular, where do you predict that they would find some good resources online? I'm going to give you something that, believe it or not, I think it's, it's a wonderful resource, and it's a very simple one. Uh, there are people that recognize David Byrne as a former member of Talking Heads. David Byrne has a website called Reasons to be Cheerful. And the URL is reasons to be cheerful dot world. And I went to the website this morning and there is a section on changing behavior. And the subheading says stories about learning to grow in ways that benefit society. There's a story on there about changing behavior, economic incentives. There's a story about 
a bicycle future. I don't know if anybody follows David Byrne, but when he is at his concerts, he basically takes a ride on a bicycle every every afternoon before a show. It's amazing. There's another one there called, Can We Change Our Behavior or Are We Stuck? And he goes on to say, our future survival may depend on our ability to adopt more selfless habits. Does that have any ramifications in business? Absolutely. It absolutely does. Uh, and it goes back to what we said earlier about the economic benefits of changing our behavior. They are enormous. Links to those sites and, of course, to your LinkedIn profile will be in the show notes to this podcast. Speaking of where to find you online, Kevin, what's the website people should visit if they want to find out more about the work you do with your company? My URL is www.bjyvalue.com. Dot com, and they will get all the information they need. And I've presented so much that uh, a Google search will give them all kinds of good information as to the topics that we've presented on. And, and I think they'll find something there. Super. BJYValue.com. Yes. And to wrap up, what's one actionable suggestion that you'd like to leave for accounting and finance professionals that will help them go beyond this disruption? I thought about this a lot, and I have very modest goals. If there is one person listening to this that is, is motivated to do something differently, then, then you and I have achieved our goal. And, and frankly, I, I tend to think that if I just remember that I just need to change myself to be able to change the world, that makes it a lot easier. What I suggest people do is simply be the pebble. It's small things. It's, it's remembering when the person cuts, cuts you off in traffic that there may be something going on in their lives that you don't know about. And it's, it's learning to do those things without thinking about them. And if you practice them every day, they become second nature. They, you don't have to think about them. And it takes work to begin with, absolutely, to make those changes. But it's, it's just, it's be the pebble. It's like I said, uh, write a nice message on the, the receipt that you give to somebody. It's, it's putting post-its on your steering wheel. It's taking the time to say a nice word. It's amazing how we talk about pay it forward. I drive through the McDonald's window and there are people that I talk to. It's just being aware. We've talked about being aware. We've talked about being authentic. That's all it takes. So be the pebble. That is my actionable item. And if anybody wants to talk about this more, I'm, I'll am i be happy to chat with them. I would never get tired of trying to uh, change things. Thank you very much, Kevin, talking about the security value of human authenticity, which I think is a great place to end our conversation today. There is plenty more to explore about this topic, so our show notes will have the links and you can view them by clicking on the episode's info icon in the podcast app that you're using right now. You can also open the episode in your computer's web browser. You'll find everything right there. Two other websites we'd recommend for anyone interested in taking uh, further their own uh, research into cybersecurity for Cybersecurity Month. Uh, you can go to aicpastore.com slash go beyond disruption or cgmastore.com slash go beyond disruption. Courses, webinars, and other professional development resources that help keep you ahead of the curve. Thanks once again to our guest from Arizona, Kevin Yiannopoulos. And of course, thank you to every single one of you for downloading and listening to this podcast. If you've enjoyed it, Go share it. Tell a colleague about it. Tell anyone about it. You can tell us about it too. Tell us what you think. Use the feedback link in the show notes because we'd love to know your opinion and what you'd like to hear more of. From our London office, from the AICPA and CIMA in the heart of London's financial district, we'll be back soon with more conversations that help you and your profession to go beyond disruption. Till next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beyond Disruption. 
brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Learn more about today's topic at AICPA-CIMA.com forward slash disruption. This podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. It is provided with the understanding that the association, its affiliates, and subsidiaries are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The association, its subsidiaries, and affiliates make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and expressly disclaim all liability for such damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.